Daily new cases of COVID-19 in China have dropped from over 3,000 in February to single digits in May, with many new cases imported. Even after the long holiday in early May, there were no large-scale outbreaks and the situation is currently stabilized. For the rest of the world, daily new cases increased at 2%, so the number remains high. Travel bans, lockdowns, social distancing, and quarantine requirements are still in effect in many countries to help prevent spread of the virus, but concerns still remain about a second wave of infection. As cities were closed for both international and domestic travelers to avoid spreading the COVID-19 virus, passenger demand dropped from 2 million in January to 130,000 in February. Chinese and foreign airlines reacted quickly and reduced capacity with low factor below 40%. As cities reopened in February, recovery began slowly. Between March to April, daily passenger traffic increased to 500,000 with the low factor at around 50%. The second stage of recovery was in May due to the long holiday in China, with travelers regaining confidence as there were no large-scale outbreaks during that time. The latest daily passenger traffic in May is at around 800,000, six times more than the lowest point in February. Low factor improved to 60%. If the number stays low, we expect another stage of passenger growth for summer. Although there are government subsidies, careful schedule planning is key to survival in this critical time. The domestic yield data in March is 30% lower than normal, dropped from 10 cents to 7 cents US dollar per RPK. And this unlikely airline can be profitable with a current 60% low factor. When we look at capacity planning, it's also a good indicator to discuss the airlines' confidence level. Air China, China Eastern, and China Southern have a positive outlook planned for the next five months before the summer slot ends last week of October. Month-to-month -month changes in June and July are 30 to 40 percent and 9 to 23 percent for the flight departing from China. Air China and China Eastern are resuming more international services in June while China Southern is resuming services in July. August to October looks relatively stable. International flights account for less than 10% of total number of flights in each airline, and the international market outlook depends on the pandemic situation in other countries. The June schedule is confirmed, but airlines are likely to reduce capacity in case the demand does not materialize. Domestic recovery is also in progress, but slow. Travel bans and quarantine requirements imposed by other countries affect the route capacity plans, so we will continue to monitor this closely. Serum utilization data tracks aircraft movement on a daily basis. The in-service single aisle aircraft in China was less than 1,000 in February because of flight cancellations. It's now close to 2,300 as of 24th of May as the domestic market recovers, only 16% below the level at the beginning of the year. As airlines are increasing capacity from June, more parked single-aisle aircraft will resume operations. However, over 35% of twin-aisle aircraft are still in storage due to lack of demand in long-haul routes. Recovery for twin-aisle aircraft is stored by new CAAC restrictions, only allowing one flight per week per airline per country. Air cargo demand could be a potential area for twin aisle aircraft. The cancellations of passenger flight create a cargo capacity shortage. So some have been converted as freighter to accommodate, particularly for international routes. The cargo yield is attractive to the passenger aircraft operators to conduct P2F modification and capture the demand during this difficult time when twin aisle passenger aircraft are grounded. The utilization of Chinese single aisle aircraft is increasing but still low. The daily utilization is about 6 flight hours per day, 27% down compared to the start of the year. The productivity is low because there are more aircraft resuming service as we saw from previous slide and the operations are still limited. We expect to see continuous improvement in the productivity of single-aisle aircraft in near future. Unsurprisingly, 
The daily utilization of twin IO aircraft is low due to lack of passenger demand, even though some of the twin IO aircraft are converted as freighters. The utilization of freighters is relatively low compared to passenger flight. We do not expect the productivity of twin IO aircraft will increase significantly until the international market becomes busy again. The Chinese government provides financial support in a number of ways focusing on supporting passenger carriers and maintaining assets for economic activities. For passenger flights, they provide a direct subsidy based on available seat kilometer. Flights operated by a sole operator get more than the multi-operators. Landing fee and navigation charges are discounted by 10% reducing operating cost. Aircraft also currently enjoy free parking in Chinese airports, which helps grounded aircraft. They are also supporting passenger aircraft for pure cargo operations, providing one-off P2F modification for each aircraft depending on the size. Subsidies are fixed depending on the distance traveled and aircraft maximum takeoff weight. Domestic traffic will recover faster than international traffic in China because of the SARS experience. Asian travelers are more cautious in personal hygiene. Wearing masks and washing hands frequently become the habit during the outbreak of COVID-19. This helps to keep the new cases low. If they need new COVID-19 cases remain low, domestic traffic will grow even faster in the summer. With the big three Chinese airlines planning additional flights in June and July indicating a market recovery, particularly domestic markets. International traffic will resume depending on other countries, but it is unlikely to recover by the end of 2021. Governments are being uh, cautious to avoid further waves of infections. Most of the Chinese government's subsidy schemes will end on 30th of June, with no news as to whether it will be extended. Airlines may suspend some services if there is a lack of demand and no subsidies. Apart from the passenger demand, the subsidy will be one of the major considerations whether airlines will discontinue services.